thank you very much for your introduction. Now, uh, you, I'm Polish, uh, so you had a uh, Scottish uh, accent person now. Now, person with uh, not not native speaker, but. I will avoid words like uh, sheet of paper or uh, <laughs> others. Uh, okay, let's 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 start. So, uh, in my presentation, first of all, I will tell you something more about the uh, trends in world population. Then. Uh, I will move on to concrete and uh, sustainability. Then uh, I will tell you something more about the curing of concrete modification. Also, I will tell you something about the timber in buildings, new engineered wood products, cross-laminated timber, and then uh, about the new novel product, timber concrete composites. So, uh, when we look at the population at the urban areas uh, in the 50s, uh, it, it looked like, like that. There were not many people living in the urban areas, most of them in the United States, but during the 50 years we, we noticed huge, huge growth in relation to that. And the forecast showing that more and more population will live in, uh, will move to the cities. Cities will, will grow. So, so uh, what are the results of that? The, one of the results is uh, noticed every national holiday in China beginning of October. You can see that uh, in the media every year. Uh, but also due to the, uh, the uh, movement of the population to the cities, which is currently 54% uh, uh, and it is predicted that in uh, 2050, 70% of people will live in the cities, the demand for the materials will increase because the demand for the multi-story constructions will increase and the most popular construction material is concrete at the moment and uh, it's the, the most produced product after oil and coffee as far as I know. Uh, one per uh, one and a half cu cubic meter per person per year is produced uh, and uh, concrete is made, the, the main ingredient of concrete is cement which consumes the energy uh, two, between 2 and 3 percent of, of uh, energy uh, used in the world which cause 5 percent of men uh, made CO2 emission. So this is a huge issue uh, related to the uh, construction industry to to keep in mind the sustainable development. So uh, the requirements for sustainable materials are to uh, develop more durable, uh, long life, uh, materials with longer life cycle, less labor, and less service intensive. And such uh, improvements were proposed as calcium aluminate cements, using natural pozzolans, fly ash, introducing those materials to concrete in order to reduce the energy uh, during the production process. However, uh, such, uh, such implementations uh, results in, uh, in challenges related to volume changes and then which induce the cracking because the deficiency of water at early stages uh, during the hydration of cement uh, leads to certification and it leads to autogenous shrinkage and consequently to cracking. And in order to reduce uh, 
that effects uh, adequate curing is needed. Curing is the process uh, to uh, provide the moisture and keep the uh, reasonable temperature during uh, the uh, using of concrete, fresh concrete at the at the site to increase its strength and decrease permeabilities. Curing is also the key factor when we talk about the durability. And there are two main approaches to curing. One is external curing, uh, where there are two categories, water curing and seal curing. However, this external curing is quite uh, labor intensive because you need someone at the site who will pour the water or will seal uh, the surface. In addition, uh, the, there is limitation of uh, the water going inside uh, the bottom of the concrete layers. Uh, therefore, not uh, it's not so effective su such such curing. However, the uh, it's it's uh, the, the advantage is you don't need to uh, another uh, additional materials. But there is new development, internal curing, and the concept is to provide the water reservoirs uh, which are uh, equally distributed within the uh, cement matrix which uh, provide the water for, for hydration process. And it can be implemented by various materials, lightweighted aggregates, super absorbent polymers, Wood, uh, wood derived products and recycled aggregates. Here uh, at the slide you have some micrographs of, uh, of examples of such products. And I would like to tell you a few more words about the newest development, super absorbent polymers, which are mostly used at the moment in the nappies. But yes, you, uh, it, it seems quite funny, but you can use them uh, for uh, curing the concrete. So the concept is that uh, the chains of the superabsorbent polymers hydrate with water uh, and uh, then provide the water for hydration process of cement and this process is reversible so uh, when the water is uh, given taken by the concrete uh, superabsorbent polymers uh, goes back to the collapse state and in concrete it looks like uh, at the slide so first we have dry uh, particles, then they uh, swallow the water, then uh, they release the water and leave empty pores behind them, which has as well some advantages in terms of the durability of concrete. But do we really need to modify the material? Perhaps we can use something else. Yes, we can. Uh, there is natural product given by the made, uh, mother nature. Uh, here is some photo from the recent tsunami in in, uh, in Japan. So uh, concrete, reinforced concrete building buildings collapsed, but the tree uh, tree was standing there. So timber in, in buildings was used for years. Uh, however, steel and concrete were more and more popular. But in the recent years, research uh, led to uh, increase of usage because the increase of understanding of the behavior of, of timber. So, here are some historical examples of timber structures in China, Japan, Uni United Kingdom. Today, we have many, many more uh, building structures in Norway, China, UK. And uh, why we, uh, we have them more and more? 
because we engineer the the timber. So we can use the small uh, small elements by engineering them, and uh, because of that, we are able to uh, introduce more and more concrete weaving construction. And here are some examples of the engineer wood products, uh, which are uh, OSB, uh, SIP panels, structural insulated panels, timber frame, traditional uh, con uh, timber materials. Uh, glue laminated timber, uh, duo trio beams, uh, those are the beams which are bonded together uh, the difference between glue lamps and duo three quattro beams is the uh, one one are working in vertically another are working horizontally but I would like to tell you a few more words about new product cross laminated timber uh, which is high performance uh, material uh, where you bond together uh, orthogonally uh, layers of uh, timber planks and such uh, uh, such, such uh, implementation su such uh, uh, orthogonally uh, such, such dimensions I, I would say uh, give uh, a lot of advantage in, ter in terms of limiting uh, the defects uh, within, within the timber. And using uh, cross-laminated timber allows us uh, to use the panels of the individual design uh, which are of different sizes and are precisely cut to the uh, dimension we need. In construction, uh, cross-laminated timber can be used for walls, floors, and uh, the elements are joined together by the metallic connections. This mater material is uh, light and easy to handle, so uh, there are lower requirements for foundations. When I, when you think about the timber, so fire uh, is uh, is ringing usually in your in your mind. But timber is uh, very good in terms of fire because it's predictable. So so you have always time for evacuation. Uh, so, so the, the research shown that after the one hour of fire test, three-story building maintained the structural integrity. Uh, when here at the slide, I would like to show you life cycle of the cross-laminated timber. So uh, the first research was in 80s, uh, but, it, but the first attempts to produce the product was in the 90s, and the predictions are that the cross-laminated timber is the future, and more and more material will be used. Uh, when we look at the buildings, uh, I would draw your attention to the building in London. It's a nine-story building, eight-story made of timber, which was built in 2009. And uh, at the moment, I think the highest uh, CLT building is in uh, Melbourne, Australia. But uh, there is one under construction in uh, in uh, Norway and it's 16 stories but uh, there are uh, even more ambitious plans uh, the, there are proposed buildings in Stockholm Vancouver and Paris of more than 30 stories and the the last slide uh, what is the future? 
timber, concrete. Perhaps the future is to combine both timber concrete composite, uh, which has a lot of un uh, advantages uh, for usage in new buildings. Uh, so, in terms of adding uh, concrete topping instead of timber, it increases the vibration behavior. Uh, by replacing the lower part of uh, concrete by timber, uh, it has especially advantage in terms of uh, having the li uh, light structure and uh, permanent formwork, and it gives opportunity to uh, refurbish the old existing building by increasing uh, the stiffness of them. So, thank you very much. I would like to uh, thank the uh, project uh, sponsor, which I'm working on, the Department of Agriculture, Food and Marine, and National University of Ireland, Galway. Thank you very much.